Hello everybody, welcome back to the Sandman Review. I realize that now not that many people are watching, which is fair enough. I'm gonna make this review really short then. Sandman Book 7, Brief Lives. I love this one. This could very easily be the best Sandman book in the entire series. I mean, it's that good. There's so much depth to this. There's so many ideas that aren't completely explored, but explored deep enough that they lodge themselves into your brain and make you explore it on your own time. So many things about this book have just made me feel so much and think so much while just being completely uh, so far away from my home. This is the type of book that completely changes the way you think. There are Sandman books that you would want to review one chapter at a time, or one issue at a time, I guess, and this is not one of those. This is one of those Sandman books that's a whole story in itself. You cannot take one part out of it and expect it to hold on its own. It's just not like that. The issue about that is that there's so many smaller bits that do hold on their own. Not entire issues, but parts of issues, maybe one third of an issue is just dedicated to a character that we never really see again. They're mentioned again, but they're not really seen again. And you could see that as a good thing or a bad thing. Personally, I saw it as a relatively middle thing. There were parts of this aspect that were really awful, and there were parts that were really, really good. The part about it that was awful was that these characters were introduced in the most interesting way imaginable. There's so much lore that was put into each person that when we never saw them again, it sort of felt like it was a waste of a character. Now, that's something interesting, because one of the things I really, really love to see in a story is to see a story about the common man, to see it about people who you do not see an entire narrative, but just people who you glimpse into, see their entire life for just a moment, and then back away. It's just so deeply interesting to me, just because that's how humanity really is. When you meet someone, you get one glimpse into their present, into their history, into their lives, and then maybe you never see them again. And it really, really well mimics that, and I think it's super interesting because of that. So I'm not exactly sure if it's a positive or a negative, because while we do do that sometimes, uh, I feel like the point of a narrative is not to have that kind of experience. Personally, I'm going to say that's a positive, because for me, uh, it just costs so much thought, so much ideas of why this happened, or why it was important, or why he put so much lore into one person, and I came to my own conclusions, and I found that it was uh, deeply interesting. Now, one thing that I did see some other people complain about was the very, very long sections of Delirium. Delirium has a lot, and I mean a lot, of talking in this one. She has so much dialogue that some pages are like 95% a Delirium. It's unbelievable. Now, whether or not you enjoy this is very much deeply ingrained within how much you enjoy realism into your story. You enjoy realism even when it's boring or repetitive, uh, and if so, and I can totally see that as a thing, you might enjoy this. However you don't, you're gonna find many portions to be really long and kind of tedious. Now, there's a lot of points where Delirium says something and it just seems completely boring and she just drags on using non sequiturs and it feels really boring in the moment. But the thing is, now that I've read the entire Sandman story, and I'm recording this later on, I realize that a lot of it is super, super good. A lot of it is stuff that you might want to pull out and place in a different book, and it completely makes sense there. And so it's really, really difficult to say whether or not this is a good thing. For me personally, I think this is a negative, because most people will not even read into these. They'll see them as delirium, and there's nothing else. And they'll just look at it once, see that it's kind of boring, and kind of skim the next couple of pages. Which is kind of sad, because delirium really, really has some detailed, intricate stuff, but they aren't really visible at this point in the story. I Feel like that's just a storytelling thing that wasn't really done well. This is the story where we kind of get the Sandman arc to finally come to its peak or its catharsis. Uh, this isn't necessarily the end, but it's the point where everything is changing. Com the, the world is shifting to Sandman's experience and it's deeply, deeply interesting. This is one of those things that completely breaks the comic genre and I can totally see why this made such a splash back in the 90s. Because obviously, it, it's so, so huge. It's like you've built up this huge, huge thing that has affected the world that is so detailed and brilliant and beautiful and suddenly one rule, one deep, interesting aspect of it has broken and you see so much changing. You see like this, the, the floodgate to open, and that is the most interesting thing about this story. When we see this happen to Dream, this is the thing that I just keep coming back to. I'm like, what, what does this mean? What kind of character arc are we truly pointing at? Is this truly one of those character arcs where the person doesn't change the entire way? Or is it one of those character arcs where they're not supposed to change what they do? Or is it one where they're trying to change it but they can't? It's so, so deep and it's so complicated that just the thought of it is so, so alleviating. It, it makes me feel like I'm looking into something deeper than myself. Now, I'm sure that there are going to be some people who read this book and will know exactly what I mean when I say there's that scene, maybe that panel. Even if you Google Sandman scenes or Sandman best uh, pictures or Sandman best panel, something like that, you'll find this up on one of the first lines of Google. It's so, so beautiful. And while I was looking at it in Google, I saw it and I thought, 
you know, it's not that great. It's pretty good. But seeing it on paper is just so, so fun. You'll know what it is because it's a, it's a full two page spread. And when you look at it, you realize there's not that much going on. Really, there isn't. There's a few speech bubbles. Every, most things are in darkness. And you see not that much detail. But what it is, is it's a really, really interesting way of setting the scene for the next few pages. Because the next few pages are my favorite pages of Sandman ever. They go into so much detail about so much complicated ideas, so much complicated narrative, so much complicated philosophy that it just bombards you. And you just feel like you're learning something so, so new. Because Sandman is really, really interesting in that it doesn't really play with rationality as much as you would expect it to. One of the things that I learned from this book uh, that I, I could not imagine learning from any other book is that roughly, roughly speaking, in the last 400 years, we've transitioned into a state of rationality over all else. And this book has taught me more than anything that rationality is not the only way of viewing the world. Now taking that idea and, you're, and applying it to every single aspect of this book, you see so much, so much comes into fruition and it completely changes everything. So for a while, I really expected to rate this book a five out of five stars. I'm not so sure I should do that. Maybe a four star, just because it's completely shifted the way I think, but there's so much dull bits and there's some, there's even one chapter uh, with somebody named Ishtar that I found extremely boring. I, I could not comprehend the, the meaning behind why Neil Gaiman put this here. It, it could be one of those things where we see into them for a moment and we see their whole history and story and then we step away because that's how humans really are. Or perhaps it was just him trying to uh, make a political message or something like that. I have no idea. To me, it doesn't really stand out as great. And I'm not sure whether I should make it a five star or four star because of that. You'll see in my Goodreads if you're seeing this in the future. But that's my review. Of, I'm, I'm gonna assume four stars for now. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.